So hey there, you are back for part two of our Foreclosure Crisis Incoming series. If you haven't watched it, I'll go ahead and link part one right up here. Go ahead and check that out. We covered a couple of things like uh, what is the foreclosure process? It's not what you think. It's uh, listed as a six step process. Well, it's not. It's actually 10 steps. You should watch that video and see how it affects the housing market. In that first video, we discussed what actually happens when foreclosures start and uh, before that, really. And then what happens to prices in the market? Check that out. You'll be missing out on this video if you don't watch that one. While we're here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Like it down here as soon as you can and leave a comment with anything that you think I missed. In this video, we'll be talking about government policy, rising forbearance extensions, and market manipulation. You don't think the market's manipulated? I don't know. We'll go ahead and talk about that. For the first slide, it's government policy right now with the CARES Act and all the other things in, uh, going on with federally backed mortgages. Uh, the Federal Housing Administration has released that a bank cannot foreclose on a property until January 1st, 2020. The current expiration on that moratorium is December 31st. That's today, October 3rd, 2020. Uh, it could change any time as soon as they decide to change the rules again. <laughs> yeah, they like to do that. Uh, we'll talk about forbearance extensions that the government wants to do uh, and uh, kind of has implemented with the CARES Act and then expiration dates for those and how there will be an absolute flood of houses hitting the market. And here's a chart. We looked at this Case Schiller Home Price Index chart in the last video. You saw the bubble in 2006 all the way through 2010 here. And now we're up here. Uh, these are uh, prices, and then these are prices adjusted for inflation on houses. You can see prices now are way above where they were in 2008, 2009, 2010. They're up here. That would indicate a bubble. This is actually July. We're in October now, so I would expect the uh, chart to be somewhere up here at this point because home prices have continued to rise because there's no foreclosures on the market. No FHA mortgages can be foreclosed on. None of those. So many are in forbearance right now. In a moment, we'll talk about how many are in forbearance. In our previous video, we talked about what happens when that forbearance ends and people have to sell their house. So the effect on forbearance and lack of foreclosures has pushed prices somewhere up around here today, October 2020. And we have forbearance extensions. We have a little bit of uh, info on a chart on this coming up here. And you'll see that people are increasingly extending their forbearance periods, which means the real economy is in fact not getting better and people cannot pay for their homes. So they have to continue to extend them. The extensions right now last for 12 months from the date they were put into uh, forbearance. So that means all the way through December 31st this year, somebody with an FHA mortgage can go ahead and put it in forbearance and have 12 months of no payments if they want to and continue extending it. Again, it's three months at a time or six months at a time that they can place their mortgage into forbearance. And then at the end of that period, they can put another three month or six month extension on it for up to 12 months. That's the brick and mortar of how it works. The uh, Lego blocks of how they put that one together there. Um, and then all of these are eventually going to expire, which is going to cause a little pop in the bubble. We'll go ahead and go over to a forbearance chart or two now and see what that has to say. Give housingwire.com the credit for this chart, but what it shows is in March 2020, a quarter percent of mortgages were in forbearance, and then it kind of skips a couple months because whoever made this chart might have been a little lazy, not really sure why. Uh, but then it jumps up to 8.5% in June. They're like, oh yeah, we're all going good here. And then, oh, hockey stick up to 8.5%. And they say, oh, it's dropping since June. So it's down at 7.8% halfway through July. Well, good for them. We were at a quarter percent. How many houses are there in the U.S.? We'll pause here so that I can add all that up. It turns out I didn't have to add it all up. All I had to do was record this whole section and then uh, delete it and look up the actual numbers instead of doing dumb math that nobody needs to do. It's just dumb. 
So it turns out that there are 37.3 million loans, like it says right here, at 7.8%. Well, actually, the latest figure I just looked it up was 4.5 million loans, give or take a couple hundred thousand. Who cares at this point? Uh, what we're going to say is think about it, people. If half of these mortgages are in forbearance, like it shows right here, let's just say half, we're gonna, you know, a couple hundred thousand mortgages in forbearance at this point doesn't matter when there's 4.5 million. That is stupid. Anyway, half of that is 3.9%. Half of uh, 4.5 million is two and a quarter million mortgages, it turns out, are uh, most likely going to extend their forbearance and uh, go ahead and possibly foreclose in the future and or try to sell their house. We looked up some Zillow figures. Zillow says, uh, well, they list 1.5 million houses for sale. So what happens when these people's forbearance periods don't extend anymore and uh, their foreclosure moratoriums run out? Well, then you get another, I don't know, let's say half of those people come on the market. So 1 million, let's just say 1 million houses come back on the market. That's like 70% more inventory hitting the market over the next year. That's crazy. That's going to drive prices through the floor. That's going to take time on market way up. You're going to have people trying to get out of their houses and they can't. They're going to be stuck. They won't be able to sell them because there's so many to on sale around their neighborhood and around the country. It will be absolutely insane. The previous chart was what the government's doing. Now we have homeowners extending their forbearance. They have 12 months. They can hang on to their house. They cannot make payments for 12 months, but then they have to start making payments. So they're going to sell their house or they'll start making payments again. But a significant portion of these people will very likely still be without a job and still unable to afford their mortgage payments after all of the debt they've incurred over the last year. You know, from like March when the whole uh, sickness thing started happening and the economy got shut down to March 2021, uh, that's 12 months. But people could be putting their homes in forbearance now, which puts them into October 2021, where they don't have to make a payment. You're going to see foreclosures like this and sales like this coming on the market all through next year. So what happens? These uh, periods are going to run out for them. These laws on foreclosure moratoriums are going to end and banks are going to begin foreclosing. When this happens, people will try to sell their house, which is going to have a whole bunch more homes on the market. Again, watch part one. We kind of explain all that. Okay, into the bubble bursting chart. This is our Case-Shiller Home Price Index we talked about earlier. I'm going to use the magic of my graphical abilities to show you what a bubble bursting looks like. This was our bubble in uh, the great financial crisis. It came up, it popped, and now we're back over here. What happens when all of these foreclosures hit the market in 2021 like they did back here in 2008-2007? This is what happens. It looks like this. The chart comes over, the foreclosure bomb hits, and we're uh, right here. Remember I said we were kind of up here before, right now in October? Well, all I did in my uh, magical graphical interface here was uh, copy the bubble from before, inflate it because it's so much bigger now, and put it where uh, we're at now. So we have like October... Right here, we're starting to see a little crack as pre-foreclosures start coming on the market from earlier in the year. We're going to go into December and all this winter slowdown. And then it's going to be a slide like in part one all the way down. You're going to see retracement from, I don't know, 330000 as an average price down to 240000 230000 It's going to be great. You're going to have great opportunities to pick up homes and come back to this video in, uh, I don't know, a couple years to see if this is how it turns out. So uh, this is about a three, four year period here. And this is about a three to five year period here, just for a reference. I'm sorry I didn't copy this over here because I really don't feel like it, but this goes out to about January, 2026. Yes, there you are. We're done with that previous slide. I'm tired of it. And I mean the slide, not the picture, because I'm going to go back to the picture in a moment. So market manipulation has effects, unintended consequences. All of this putting off of the foreclosures, all of this forbearance is going to cause a giant pent up 
herd of buffalo of foreclosures to come onto the market. I'm just uh, making some kind of reference there because it's going to be a whole bunch that just kind of bulldozes everything over. Uh, and it's caused by a uh, large number of homes for sale when everybody realizes they're going to be foreclosed on. Luckily, we'll still have low interest rates. So if you're able to survive the impending foreclosure crisis, you'll be able to pick up some homes very, very inexpensively. And then I want to talk about rental prices. All of this has an effect on rental prices. We'll go to a chart quickly. This is just a Fred chart of rental prices you see in the GFC right here. They kind of flattened. They didn't really drop. They just sort of flattened. As everybody was being evicted, they had to go find affordable rentals that were less or the same price as their house payment and go uh, on a month-to-month -month thing instead of having a 30-year mortgage. Since then, over the last, I don't know, 12 years, you can see prices have skyrocketed. That is absolutely crazy. There are a lot more rental properties available now, and there are a lot more renters, but prices are going up. Okay, and you can see it kind of flattens right here. And you may be seeing this happen uh, in the future. I don't know. I'm not a fortune teller. I can only give you a uh, probability. I think there's a high probability you're going to continue to see some price increases. And then you'll see them flatten out. And then you'll see them go up like this again. Just like this. Except if uh, 2011, 2012 were today. That's what's going to happen in my opinion. I think there's a high likelihood of that. So there's a few effects of the market manipulation going on right now with the CARES Act. And we'll go to our last slide. So to sum it all up, talk about government policy. They're uh, creating unintended consequences with their foreclosure moratoriums and forbearance extensions. It's allowing people to stay in their homes longer than they should and not allowing the market to clear. So you're going to have a big old bubble of foreclosure properties burst, even though it's not a financial crisis in the banking industry. It's simply people not able to pay. You'll also have a high likelihood of homeowners staying in their house as long as they can. The effect this has on people who have a foreclosure moratorium on their loan when that date is about to run out. They go ahead and all throw their house on the market at the same time so that they can get rid of it before they have to actually pay their mortgage payment or get foreclosed on. If they're in forbearance, when their forbearance is about to run out, they're going to do the same thing right before that, that month before their forbearance runs out. They're throwing the house on the market because they can't afford to pay for it anymore. So you see big chunks of houses coming on the market through the end of 2020, right when it starts in December 2020, and then monthly throughout 2021. It's just chunk after chunk after chunk of homes coming onto the market, increasing the inventory, increasing time on market. The government can try to slow this down with more extensions and whatever, but the point is it's going to happen. They cannot continue to have people not pay their mortgages forever. People will be throwing their house on the market in the next year or two, and you're going to see inventory go up and a foreclosure crisis. So that'll do it. Go ahead and like this video if it was any good. Subscribe right here and uh, leave a comment below. Uh, we'll put another video right here for you to watch. Uh, just let us know what else we can do for you. And y'all have a good day out there.